Let us understand friction. From Newton's first law, you have learned that an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside net force. But from everyday experience, you always see things come to rest. You will, of course, notice that how quickly something comes to rest will depend on surface type. Here is another experiment involving a vertical surface. You can press a book against a wall completely horizontally without any lifting force from below, and it will stay there. But of course, you need to press hard. If you ease back up on the force, it will fall. In both examples, there was a force parallel to the contact surface. This force that resists the slipping of the surfaces is known as friction. To understand how friction works, Consider how solid surfaces interact. On the molecular level, the force responsible for the interaction of the molecules making up the surfaces is the electrostatic force. This is caused by the repulsion or attraction of electrons and the atomic nuclei. On the molecular level, there is no such thing as a perfectly straight, flat surface. The molecules will always introduce some bumpiness. As one tries to slip two surfaces past each other, the molecules in the bumps are going to be pressed against each other, at which point the electrostatic force will resist them being pressed further. This resistance against parallel movement of the surfaces is what we experience on the macroscopic level as friction. As demonstrated in the example of the book, the friction will depend on how hard the surfaces are pressed together. When you press two surfaces together, you will press the bumps closer together, introducing additional repulsion between the molecules. Hence, there will be greater friction. 
there are two types of friction you need to learn about at this point. The first type is static friction. Static friction is the resistive force against two solid surfaces trying to slip past each other. Whether it's the resistance of a gentle push or even what keeps this eraser from slipping down this incline. The direction of friction is always parallel to the surface. Its magnitude is given by the formula mu s fn. fn, of course, is the normal force. The magnitude of friction is directly proportional to the normal force and the proportionality constant mu s is known as the coefficient of static friction. This constant has no units and can be greater than one. There is a maximum to static friction after which the surfaces will break out of this regime and start slipping. This new regime is known as kinetic friction. The proportionality between kinetic friction and normal force is similar, but now we have a constant mu k, referred to as the coefficient of kinetic friction, that is different from its static counterpart. You will learn about the quantitative difference between the two regimes in a future lab. After finishing this video, you should move on to practice problems involving friction. But before you do, please be aware of a couple of important mistakes. It is commonly misstated that static friction means an object is not moving. While this may be true in some applications, there are others where this is not true. Here is a simple example. We now have the eraser on a piece of paper. If I pull on the paper gently, the eraser stays put relative to the paper.
it is static friction that keeps the eraser right on top of the paper moving with it. Another common misconception about friction is that kinetic friction always slows things down. Once again, let's use the paper and the eraser to demonstrate a counterexample. I'm going to pull a bit harder on the paper now. And you will notice that even outside the static friction regime, the eraser will accelerate in the direction of the paper because of kinetic friction. You will practice the problem treatment of each of these using free body diagrams in another video.